Connell O'Connell Show continues here on your home of the Utes, ESPN 700. We've been waiting for this for a little while. Finally got it done. We're going to call it the Rising Report. The Rising Report is brought to you by Prices, Guaranteed Doors, and Windows. Every single week during this season, QB1, Cam Rising, will be here with me in studio. Cam, how are you? Welcome. Doing good. Just happy to be here. Fired up to get this show going. Yeah, man. Really excited. Glad to be back on local airways. Glad I get the guy, right? It's been, <laughs> it's been what, seven years since I had this show. It's, we've only been going for a month, and now we're going to talk every single week during the season. We are just over a week away from kicking this thing off. Explain for me your level of, like, anticipation, nervousness, whatever. Given what has happened all last year, given your success already in this program, now what we think is one final ride about to start. How are you feeling? I'm fired up. I'm I'm just excited to to really play again, get on the field. Um, I I pride myself on on being on the field and just playing, being there with the guys. And and just last year was hard, and kind of kind of excited to just put that behind me and and focus on this year and and try to try to reach for the stars and do everything we possibly can to 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 go win the conference. And being in a new conference is going to be interesting, but excited for it. We're not going to talk a lot about last year, but want to get it out of the way. Football wise. You probably just had a lot of time to study, watch film, become more of a student of the game than you already were. What changed for you football-wise having to sit out for a whole year? I think the way I look at the game um, kind of tried to take a different approach with, with how I, I analyze defenses, especially when you're not applying it to yourself and how you're going to get the ball out fast and stuff like that. Kind of just understanding X's and O's and why defenses do what they do and how everything kind of in football always has to make sense. And, and that's that's the beauty, beautiful thing about it. And that's what is so fun of trying to find the answers to, to what different looks that they give you and anything like that. And and I'm, I'm glad to have Coach Ludwig right there that, that that's paving the way, just showing me just how, how he does it and, and, and the best ways to do it in week in, week out. And, and yeah, I've just been trying to learn as much as I can. I'm going to have a chance to talk to Coach Ludd every week also. We're going to do a little coordinator's corner. Um, what's your relationship like with him now? So deep into it, he's got so much trust in you. I assume it goes the other way. What's your relationship like? That's my guy. I, I love Coach Ludd. Um, he, he, his first day was, was pretty much my my visit, so he's he's awesome. I, I, I have a tremendous amount of respect for him. Um, I understand why he's just nice and kind of quiet. Usually he likes to, to stay out of the spotlight, but he – he is one of the best in the business, and and just he he his dedication is unlike anyone else, and and I just have so much respect for him, and and just I'm glad he's my coach. People ask me this all the time, like how come it works so well between him and Kyle Whittingham, Coach Whit after Lud, and then before Lud because they were you know those yeah. years sandwiched in between. The offense was just not his thing. Ludwig is the answer for Kyle Whittingham in my mind. Why does it work so well between those two? I think because they have more of a open communication, they like to to talk and, and discuss different things. I think potentially, I I didn't really work with any of the other OCs or anything, but from what I imagine, I think maybe they went against Coach Witt a lot and didn't didn't try to understand like the bigger picture of the game. And and I think Coach Witt, Coach Led does a a good job making sure that when when Coach Witt wants to take a shot, we're we're gonna take a, a shot and we're gonna find an, another play if we if he thinks we should run it or just try to get uh, a shorter gain on a third down so that we can go for it on fourth and, and just put us in, in a lot of better situations in football because it's not always about just trying to trying to take shots and, and or just running the ball. It's, it's, it's finding that balance of, of when to do it, and, and that's the, the beautiful thing with having, having those two just coming together and making sure that we're, we're doing it at the right time. So the bulk of fall camp is behind you. You're you're now in effectively game preparation. So the install, I imagine, is done. Yep. Are, is Lud still installing things that are new to you this far into your career? Yeah, there's always there's always new nuances that we learn. Um, Coach Coach Lud studies tape like no other, so he he's always trying to find new plays that we can kind of implement, new protections and all that. So yeah, there's there's definitely new nuances that we've been working on a lot, and and I think. It'll show up and, and really help us out this season. I've heard you talk about this before. The, the Big 12 offers a couple different schematic things than what we've seen in Pac-12 defenses yeah. for the most part. But you have some familiarity because of your time at Texas, especially yeah. with the way like Iowa State does oh, things. Yeah. How much are you studying that 
big picture stuff in the offseason. I know you're now to Southern Utah, but were you already looking at every team in the Big 12 throughout this offseason? I mean, kind of. You know, a lot of times when you when you watch film, it's it's just to kind of get a feel for the players and, and kind of what they're trying to do schematically against who. Um, a lot of things that we do on offense is different from a lot of the teams in the Big 12, so it's kind of hard to always implement our offense into those. So I really like to just kind of take a look, see see if I can just get a little understanding of the defense, but but not, not go overboard and studying and just try to come – with 50 plays for Coach Ludwig because I, I I was focused on what we could do to beat this this exact defense. <laughs> I would love to hear those conversations. You trying to convince Lud to get something in there? Oh yeah, it's a it's a pretty pretty common occurrence in the quarterback <laughs> room. <laughs> uh, how much are you going to be running this year? Uh, how, how comfortable are you running? I feel good. I I yeah, I feel really good. I think I can run as much as I need to. Um, I never really try to try to run as much as I do but sometimes it just happens pocket breaks down you got to get outside and, and run so that that's that's my plan I'm not sure if we're going to have as much uh, design quarterback run with the the lead block or anything like that but if they want to I'm ready for it how many times have you gone back to the sideline after a, a scoring drive or whatever and coach Ludd or who maybe coach Witt been like hey you got to protect yourself more because you are not shy about contact. You don't like, I know you try to be smart with the slides and stuff, but all of us see that for you, it's about being a competitor and moving the sticks. How often have they had to be like, Hey, calm down. I don't really think I take big shots. Like, I, I mean, I've taken some big shots that, that definitely are, are not, not, not the best situation, but I mean, it's third and short and you're in a championship game. Like, what do you, what do you expect me to do? Just, slide at, at three yards behind the line of scrimmage or behind the first down line. Like I'm not, I'm not built like that. That's not something I do, but if you really watch football and watch me play, like I, I really don't think I take big hits when I do get hit and, and you just got to learn how to, how to, how to fall down and how to, how to embrace the, the hits that you do take. You do have a little bit of like a, I don't know, unconventional wiggle where you're, you're able to stop the big. I don't know if it's unconventional, but. Everybody always tells me I'm sneaky fast or unconventional. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it is what it is. Well, that, that's that's like the uh, that's the low hanging fruit, right? The uh, he's sneaky athletic because you don't look the way that a lot of the, like traditional athletic quarterbacks look, right? It's the joke that we all the stuff that you're not allowed to say. Like why why is that guy sneaky athletic, but that guy's just athletic? For does, sure. it, does it bother you a little? <laughs> No, nah, it is what it is. I mean, <laughs> it bothers you a little. Funny. That's all right. It's funny. <laughs> Cam Rising is my guest here on the Sean O'Connell Show. We'll be talking with Cam every week throughout this Utah football season. I put out, I don't know how many questions, how many polls. We're trying to prognosticate and predict what this offense is going to look like, and the agreement seems to be that this will be more passing heavy. Is it actually going to be more pass heavy? I think so. I, I mean, we have – rooms full of guys that, that can go out and play and play at a high level and any chance you have depth like that outside you can really extend it and, and pass the ball downfield and I think it'll open up for for bigger runs and stuff like that when we do decide to run it so I, I, I can see us definitely passing the ball more for sure a huge part of the passing game is obviously how you are protected um correct me if I'm wrong they, in camp we were ta- asking about like the offensive line and it felt like early on we got the five guys we want. We're trying to develop the depth behind them. It felt like it was happening really early. Is that an accurate assessment where right at the beginning of camp, you knew who your five guys were going to be? Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, I, I think a lot of those guys like set themselves to a higher standard during during spring ball and kind of over over summer really just took advantage of every every workout and everything they possibly can to to be ready to go because – they did look phenomenal, and especially going against some of those D linemen that we have on our team, it's never going to be easy. And and they've held their own, and and I think it's probably one of the best years we've had with the with the offensive line just all camp. How are the running backs coming along? That weirdly, in a year where you're expected to win the Big Twelve Conference, college football playoff options, maybe hopes. Uh, the running game is such a constant at Utah, and and that's kind of like the hey, do we have what we need in this run game? There's not an obvious star, even though makai has been incredible for this Absolutely. team. Um, how's the running back room looking in your mind? It's looking good. I think we have a lot of guys that can go out there and play, um, and and 
and I, I think it's going to be by committee just because a lot of the guys do different things and, and can hit holes in different ways or run routes at, at different ty- different speeds just because they're, they're a lot faster. But, yeah, I think any guy that goes in will be ready to go for whatever kind of run they, they need to do and, and even pass protection too. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm fired up to have them back there blocking for us. How often are you going to have three tight ends on the field, do you think? I'm not sure, but we we definitely have a room to do it. Like there's there's three guys that can go out there and win win one on ones and and just create problems for for the defense. So I mean, it'll definitely be a part of our offense. I imagine you're not getting hit a lot, but you do have some time against the ones in camp, right? You you yep. ones versus ones, one offense oh, yeah, versus one defense. Majority of it. Okay, great. Who's making your life most difficult on that defense? I mean, Zamaya Vaughn is always just just a big corner fast too like it's it's hard to run by him especially when he can just catch up that that quickly and stuff but um yeah he's been he studies us a lot and he, he's gone against us for a few years now so he knows a lot of our plays so just trying to find new nuances just to beat him is, is always hard what's the conversation like inside the locker room on, on the expectation front right you know how talented this roster is you know how you have important players in important positions with a lot of experience yourself included but you're supposed to stay focused on southern utah etc so what are the conversations like in the locker room on, on what you guys think you can achieve this year i mean we're, we're talking about big 12 champions and, and going to the college football playoff that that's that's our goal that's our focus doing everything we possibly can to get ready for that and and we're kind of starting to switch to the to just one on mentality and just focusing on that that's that's the goal, and that's what you got to do to to get through a championship season. Um, I think it's going to be like fourteen or fifteen games to get to the national championship. Yeah. So it's a it's a long season. So you just got to take it one week at a time and just be ready to go. Yeah, that's. I think it's fifteen if you get the first, first round playoff by. by. Yeah, like if you win the championship. Yeah, that's crazy. It is. It's a long season. No doubt. What are the similarities or differences in the locker room, the team culture, with this particular group and? the groups that won Pac-12 championships? I think, I mean, I think a lot of those teams kind of like the 21 and 22, like we were just starting to develop that that higher standard and, and making sure that every group's coming along for the ride and, and doing it at a high level. And I think that just has started earlier and earlier for us each and every season. Guys are trying to set the standard, and, and the captains are doing a great job making sure that they're leading, doing everything they possibly can to, to bring the groups with them, and, and that's where I think the biggest difference has been. Cam Rising for a few more minutes here on the Sean O'Connell Show. I said we're not going to talk a lot about last year, and I promise we won't. Last year was, for me, one of the more impressive coaching jobs I have seen this staff do yeah. because of all the adversity that was dealt with, all the injuries, and still found a way to win eight games, still found a way to win important games um, at, at half strength in a lot of cases. Yeah. Did that help develop more trust between the coaching staff and the team, or did that change anything between the coaching staff and the team when, I don't know, just you were able to do it even at a compromised roster? I'm not sure, but I, I do think that like opened a lot of players' eyes, being like, dang, like, like we're, we're just right there. We could have could have won a lot of those games that we did lose and stuff like that and just yeah I mean I, I've I've always had confidence in the coaches and everything that they do and I, I know that they're trying to put us in the best position they they they, they do 100 hour weeks just to make sure that we're, we're running everything that we possibly can that that's, that's going to put us in the best position so yeah I think I think the guys already kind of knew that so we bought in last year and that's the reason why we were so, so successful and, and able to get eight wins BYU back on the schedule as a conference opponent. Yeah, you've done just about everything a quarterback can do in a Utah football uniform, but because of the scheduling situation, you haven't had a chance to beat BYU yet. Yep. You ready to check that box? That is that is the box that I'm looking forward to checking the most this year. I think, yeah, for sure. It's funny because you didn't grow up in Utah, right? Yeah. You, you came in from Texas to the program. But you seem to have a pretty deep understanding, even though you haven't played BYU a bunch of times, of how significant the rivalry is. And you've clearly adopted that in your own self. How and why? Um, it kind of stems back. My, my One of my dad's buddies actually went to BYU a long time ago, <laughs> and he actually ended up getting kicked out. Oh. And I found out the reasons he got kicked out, and I was like, wow, like – 
that's just not a place I'd ever imagine myself going, you know, and, and kind of just have always had a, a little weird uh, connection to BYU. Never, never really like a little, was, little. A, was an option for me out of, out of college or, any, or coming to college or anything like that. Like, yeah, just never, never was a fan. And then came here and just got 10 times worse. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we were going over uh, on a show last week. We were going over the record books and your place in the record books. And hey, can this guy beat these numbers? Do you know what those numbers are? Do you know how many yards you need to have? How many touchdowns you need to have to be atop the Utah record books? Not exactly. No. Do you want to know? Do you care about that? I mean, I'm not. I'm not opposed to taking some records. You know? Okay. <laughs> Three thousand four hundred nine yards passing this year. Four hundred nine yards. Thirty four oh nine. Yep. To get Scott Mitchell's career passing record, wow, twenty four touchdown passes that we can do for sure to take to take that same, <laughs> and then because of your success in uh, in rushing the ball, the all purpose touchdowns I think you only need like seventeen. So if all you, purpose, if oh, you wow. so if you if you rush and throw for a combined seventeen yeah. touchdowns this year, you're top the record books. Wow. So you're you're going to leave Raise this universe. Bar, yeah. yeah, we we think. The conclusion when we were looking at all these, we you know, like it seems like you're gonna be atop the record books in a lot of these categories. I hope so. I've been here for quite a while. <laughs> but okay, you've been here. But I haven't played. But you haven't played. Like that's something that I think gets lost in the conversation. Like, oh, you've been here for seven years. This is your fourth year. Yeah. Really, of actually playing because of <laughs> a lot of different reasons. For sure. So there's no asterisks. No. It's a four year career. Oh yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I'm not I'm not gonna be putting an asterisk next to it so it is what it is yeah do you want to be talked about as the greatest quarterback in utah football history i mean who doesn't want that like anytime you can try to you come to a, a, a university like this that has so many great quarterbacks um and just you have so much respect for them if you can be even mentioned in their name that that's that's an honor and just to be even considered a, as one of the greatest would be would be a great honor and I just would be happy with with that kind of career for sure all right, we're uh, we're giving away FightCon tickets. FightCon's coming the same day that the UFC comes on October fifth oh, wow. to Salt Lake City. That's a bye week for you. Yeah. So you know, hopefully, we can see you out of both of those. If you had to have like Dark Alley, one guy on your team to fight alongside you, and you got to name one, I ask as many people as I can this question because it always fascinates me if I get the same name out of a lot of people's mouths. One guy on the team, life or death. Ooh. It's gonna have to be one of the one of the one of the big Polynesian. It's got to be right for sure. Uh, probably Junior or Keanu. Those guys, they seem nasty. They seem like they'll do anything to win a fight. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'd definitely take one of those two guys. All right, that's uh, to me. That feels like. As high a compliment as you can pay yeah. to a D lineman, especially. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Those guys are nasty. <laughs> they 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 create havoc, and and yeah, I think they would be able to to hold their own in that alley. Uh, what should we expect from Southern Utah? Um, they're gonna play a lot of quarters and a lot of cover three and all that, and they do some really good things. And we'll be facing uh, a couple of old old Utes, uh, Wiz and and LPJ. So uh, fired up to see those guys and, and play against them, and just. Really looking forward to to getting back on the field and and playing. Last thing before I let you go, um, Isaac Wilson is your backup. Yep. There's some other guys in that room that we know are very capable quarterbacks. What is your role and your relationship in bringing those guys along? Because obviously you got your own craft to worry about, but if anything should happen, you want to make sure the team is still set up for success. So how how active a role do you take there? I just try to ask questions, um, questions that I think would help the room that, that understand things better. Um, just try to try to give my two cents with, with any play, just to just to if it can help them at all, I'll try I'll try and do it. And I think they've been doing a great job just listening to when I when I give those little tidbits of information, just because sometimes they're I like to simplify as much as I possibly can so that I can have a better understanding of the grand scheme of things and. And yeah, hopefully, hopefully they've been they've been doing a great job, just making sure that they they listen and and, and apply it to their game. Cam, appreciate you doing this. Sure. Glad that we're going to be doing it every week throughout the season. 
That's the starting quarterback for your University of Utah football team, Cameron Rising. Brought to you by Prices Guaranteed Doors and Windows. We'll hear from him every single week on the Sean O'Connell Show. This 